Um, yeah. <laughs> it happens, well. I know. How have you been? Anyway, like, how's how's life been? Um, life's life's been crazy, bro. It's like it's, it's it, it actually feels like um some sort of weird TV show at the moment. You know what I mean? And um, I was saying to um my brother the other day, I finally got myself into a position of life where I could literally make money from just music and DJing and stuff yeah. like that. And it's literally just been swipes from man at the moment. You know what I mean? So the adjustment's been a bit. Crazy, man. How you been coping, man? Uh, yeah, I mean, similar bite, really. I mean, obviously, I, I went from kind of being busy and booked to effectively being unemployed overnight. Yeah, uh, yeah, I hear you. It's, you know, there, there's like a few like consultancy bits that come in and, you know, there's like some other, um, you know, I was waiting on like previous checks to come in from, you know, other clubs and stuff. So it kind of kept me afloat a little bit, but yeah, um, but yeah, for the most part, I've now got to a point where, you know, it's starting to dry up and I'm waiting for, um, you know, obviously the, the self-employed bailout to, to kick in, um, yeah. you know, next month. So yeah, I'm not cross- even entitled to that. I'm not even entitled to that because I've not been like um, oh, self-employed man. like for... For that long, I think it's since since um, November, December last year, officially. Oh, you know what geez. I mean? So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's a tough one, man. But mm-hmm. um, we're here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear Got that. Life, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, provided like you know, you and the family fine. Um, you know, that's the main thing. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But but yeah, so like I said, I've been saying all these episodes, um, you know, part of this uh series is really just kind of checking on the homies, make sure we're all right and stuff. And you know, yeah, man. kind of because I feel that I don't really kind of speak to people outside of the club, like and especially with like you and I, like we'll see each other in passing once every blue, yeah, and, like communicate on, on Twitter and Instagram or whatnot, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, rarely do I do I get a chance, obviously, like see you in person, you know, let alone, yeah, it's, it's true, it's true. Um, so it's obviously good to, you know, kind of connect like that. And yeah, the, the other part of the series really was um, just to kind of put out good content, you know, work with with a lot of DJs who are rake, who I've, I've known for a few years and stuff. And it's been, you know, like good to... Good to yeah, man. Appreciate you for reaching out though, man. Uh, any time, Appreciate man. it, man. Because I'm just trying to think, like, the first time we actually properly met, I think it, it must have been a Just Jam or something like that. I think it was a Just... I think, I think it was a Just Jam because around them times, I was like, um, J, big up JP. JP brought me into Just Jam off the strength of, bruv, I could DJ. I must have hassled him outside one club one time. Bruv, I could DJ. And um, he must have been like, uh, I'm not too sure. Then after Skit Speaks, whole tight Skit Speaks, he must have... um. Needed, he got a set at Chocker Block, but he weren't a DJ. So he was yeah. like, bruv, come and DJ. You get me? I'm like, bro, where? He said, oh, Chocker Block. I thought, oh, okay, I could kill two birds with one stone here. Mm-hmm. Totally mashed it up with him. You get me? Um, and after that, JP Bookman. And ever since then, I was sort of in that scene, the shortage, grime, the new yeah. rave scene. I was, I was sort of in there at that point. And I think it was a just jam I did meet you at. Mm-hmm. And I think I asked, um, you asked me to come to your record label launch yeah yeah that's right the triangle and um done that and i think you done a just i done i done a just jam for my mixtape king to gram mm-hmm. and you came down there and um i remember you said to me um this was this was um and i didn't even look at it like this but you said to me ah oh, because i was just learning to scratch then and i was scratching on gram he was like bro you know you're the only person that literally does that you get it's, me? it's weird and you know what there's even even to this day there's really only like a handful of djs that do that uh, i think yeah me um sketchy from back in the day uh rossi being luca yeah definitely and yeah. then you know there was like shifty shifty from the us um i think that's that's about it from from memory uh who i know yeah kind of cut it up over grime and stuff um yeah you know so it's yeah it's it's a, it's a mad one man so i started like that, that, that just really bugged me out when i saw it because i was like wow oh, like someone else is doing what i'm kind yeah of because that's my background like to be honest with you grime was a thing i fell in love with more than more than anything and got involved because mm-hmm. i do i'm a hip-hop head i'm a dancehall head you know what i mean but mm. grime felt like ours as in ownership as in there was culture behind it there was a youth club movement behind it, it was a scene and that's what i love more than anything you know what i mean yeah. um unfortunately as you know um there's politics in every genre and mm-hmm. i've just sort of when it comes to grime i still love it i still play around with it but as far as being invested in it as i once was i'm not just due to, I think, 
Um, again, no disrespect to the genre, but I think I've sort of outgrown it to a certain extent, as in I'm 36 now. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I've got kids and it's a thing of where I need to be simulated memory in, um, mentally to what I'm listening to. And with Graham, I've, there is a couple good artists, don't get me wrong. Like there's, mm-hmm. um, there's novelists and like there's, um, I like Tommy B. You know yeah, what I mean? But cool. I did, there, there is some artists who are good, but as far as it grabbing my attention, like it's sort of just drifted and it's weird because I still love it. I still love the nostalgia. I still play the old bits and that, but I think Graham is just, really gone in another direction now what I'm personally sonically struggling with you know what I mean but I still do the thing that I'm I, I host for dub plate mechs at Graham Original okay, shout out to Sharky you. Major shout, yeah. shout out to Mex SN1 I, I still do that so I still get mm-hmm. to in, get my fix if you know what I mean so um, yeah, yeah, for real. yeah man it's all good man yeah it, it was a weird one because I mean I, I always kind of dip in and out periodically yeah um, I mean, like you, you know, my background is, is hip hop mainly, um, and with grime. I mean, at that point, there was, you know, I think 2010, 2011 times, you know, when we was like doing um, when you were doing Chocker Block. Um, yeah, that was such a sick rave as well. It like, was, yeah, man, it was. You know, Chocker Block. Um, what else was there? Dirty Canvas. Um, Dirty Canvas, yeah, man. And I, I feel like Just Jam as well at that point, it's responsible for like so many like legendary moments. Um, Definitely. I, like, I don't think Tim and Barry really get enough credit that- They don't, they, deserve, you know they I mean? don't. Like they were so ahead of the curve, like visually, even just to keeping it to this raw form of, um, of, of what it is. I think they've done very good to do that and capture that. And you're right, it's a, it's a, it's a shame that more pe- I'm not saying it's a shame because we know a lot of people do know about them, but they're not they're not mentioned enough for my life in any way. You know what I mean? Because they really, when I, the more I got into it, I was understanding the the money they were spending and not really mm-hmm. getting nothing back. It was a proper yeah it's passion mad, sort man. of project with them. Like I know for not for a fact, but I've got a feeling they probably spent more than they've earned mm-hmm. through the scene, and that's love. A lot of people are not on that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people also don't know how how deep they run in the scene. You know, not just from yeah. in Just Jam, but uh, obviously, you know, shooting Skepta's video to even like mm-hmm. art direction, album covers. Um, Dizzy's in it. They've done Dizzy's yeah, Mass in English, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's mad because, you know, like you said, the people that know about them know about them. Um, mm. But we are also in a day and an age where people do tend to get written out of history by various yeah. publications. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's yeah. kind of frustrating, and you know that that applies to um, you know hip hop and especially like UK rap as well. Um, there's a lot of artists that you know kind of don't get celebrated, um, and you know, obviously, like I guess one of them was Ty. You know, R.I.P. Um, you know, I feel yeah, that for him, you know, again, such a legendary artist, and it's that you know age old thing of um, you know when an artist you know sadly passes away, all of a sudden you know everyone starts bringing them flowers, and it's like, well, yeah. Where were you when you know the guy was out here like releasing music and yeah yeah it's just crazy man I mean um, it's different ever new ever man they've got everything just handed to them as far as be having a YouTube channel is the equivalent of having your own TV station mm-hmm. you know what I mean you can record from your phone you can record from your MacBook in your room at some high quality radio no one really cares about us anymore as DJs as, as far as yeah this DJ needs to have my tune so it could. It's just changed that, and with that comes a sense of arrogance. But at the end of the day, without the the pave, what was led before that, there's none of this. You know, I mean, I think people just need to be simply the, the youngers. They need to be mindful and respectful of that. No, I'm not the biggest fan of all their music, but I've got a 90 year old son. I've got a 10 year old son who bangs out drill and bang. But they like that. I'm not going to say don't listen to that because yeah. that's their thing. But at the same time, he knows his favourite producer is Dr. Dre, my son. So he knows, you know what I mean? It's all about education. That... Yeah, and I think that's what it is. I mean, because with, with a lot of other genres, and especially, I say especially, even though they're kind of more global, you know, even drum and bass, house music, um, you know, even techno, and, and, you know, to an extent, um, I say reggae and dancehall as well. Yeah. If you're an avid fan, you will do the research. You will appreciate the older tracks. You will... Yeah delve in and, and you know do your research but i think the argument is because hip-hop and, and r&b is effectively now pop music 
and yeah. has been for the best part of you know, God knows how long, 15, 20 years, yeah. so stretch you back as far as that. Mm. With, with pop music, it's always seen as very disposable, always seen as being very current, and you know, with everyone's attention span these days, everyone's looking at, all right, cool, I've digested that, that's wicked, what's next? And yeah. you know, that kind of throwaway mentality. Um, I think it's the only, the only thing that's kind of that's got going against it at the moment, and I, I kind of understand why kids think that way because of obviously how how it's presented to them and how you know it's obviously yeah. the charts now. Um, but I always say to kind of any any DJs who are kind of coming up or, or getting started, like if they're really passionate about this thing, then do the research because this game is you know like it's a marathon. This is not about getting your fifteen minutes of fame and you know blowing up. Mm-hmm. And you know, we're, we're a testament to that. You know, we're in our 30s. We're, um, you know, still at a point where we're actively getting booked. You know, Snips is in his 40s. He's still doing yeah. loads of great things. And even even the generation above us, like, you know, Short yeah. Dances, your Swerves, your MKs. Mm-hmm. Um, Westwood, Wadigan, like, Mighty Crown. Crown. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're, so, yeah. you know, they're, they're still out there throwing parties and, uh, you know, still, be, you know, busy in the clubs and stuff. Um, and it just goes to show that, you know, 90s hip hop is an old man rap for do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, speaking of, of DJing, just in general, I mean, how did you how did you initially get into uh, like, what was your kind of entry entry point? Well, um, in 1998, I must have went to Jamaica for family um, family wedding. Um, I've always been around the sound thing. Um, my godfather is Jashaka. Okay. And my dad, my dad was my dad used to roll with the sound and be in the sound as well. So it's always been around me, but it wasn't a real interest of mine. It was just, oh, my dad's in this sound. Only when I grew up, I knew how big Shaka was. Like I never knew. You know what I mean? It was just my godfather Neville to me. But I realized that he was on some next thing, like playing in Japan and years before even Mighty Crown did what he did in Japan and stuff. But um, so I had that in my back of my mind. I had that background went to Jamaica family wedding and um you know over there's unruly is I was like 14 15 and I went to a base odyssey um party oh wow and I couldn't bro I was 15 bro like I couldn't believe what I was seeing bro I'm 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 seeing the man playing he's got the palm of like the crowd in the palm of his hand he's talking then he's making the song what he's talking about connect to what I was like this is mad so that summer must have come back to England now. And um, one of my good friends, Dropsy, DJ Dropsy, um, he was starting a sound. And I was like, okay, I'll roll. You know what I mean? Like, I'll just roll with it. And um, yeah, um, we started. Um, it was me, Dropsy, Big Up Schema, Hotel Esco. We were the, we're the main lot, but we started off by playing in a pub. We played in a pub in Peckham called um, Warmer Castle alongside Lord Gellies. And... Um, that was our entry. So mm-hmm. when I say my my entry has never been singular, even though like on our side of stuff, a lot of people see me by myself. But I actually come from a, I'm in a sound. I come right. from a sound. And um yeah, we started playing at, at Lord Gelly's. They made us do the warm up first, like you know how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, then after that, we've got to play a bit earlier. Then after they started respecting us, they let us finish the set sometimes, and then they'll start paying for our cab because these times. Um, Dropsy used to live around the Owlsbury Estate area and um, Warmer Castles in Peckham. Um, so what we had to do is, these time we're broke, 16, 15 years old, broke. We're walking through Peckham Ride Park, snow, rain, like, it don't matter. We're walking through the park. He's carrying the seven inch box. I'm carrying the 12 inch and we're walking to do our booking. Back and forth, like, didn't matter. Um, so after that happens now, obviously we're in the Jamaican circuit, the yard circuit. So Lord Gellies, mm-hmm. you've got movie star Johnny, you've got Mataran flying over to come and play in this pub. And it's, it's crazy when I'm thinking about it back now, but it's like that was at, at the schooling, what we got there, mm-hmm. it is so impossible to even value. Like you can't, you can't put a price on that. Mm-hmm. Like there was times we messed up like one time... <laughs> Dropsy, um, I used to be the r and I wasn't even DJ then, but Dropsy used to let me select the r and and hip hop. So he'll be the main DJ and I'll be in the box selecting. Yeah. And, um, you know, right, wind down time, everyone's going home, you know, man them finally, yeah. So he says, yeah. Um, I say, yeah, I'll give him this. You got it bad, innit? So I put on, you got it bad. But I didn't, I weren't really, re- remember these times you could bun, you know, in, in, inside the place and drink and that. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm not really clocking where I go on properly. So I put the song on the deck, I put the needle on, and it was the frigging techno version of <laughs> the band. And oh that there, that killed me, bro. But again, you learnt from it, you know what I mean? Because yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, like, the Jamaican crowd is one of the most hardest crowds to satisfy. And that's, that's the thing, I mean, I've, I've learned as well from, you know, you doing a lot of like uh, dance as well is that if you like say you're you're kind of all right but even if you're not like 100 percent on form that was just straight yeah down. you might catch a bottle in your head if you're not careful with certain places because they take their culture very very mm. seriously as in music is jamaica's number one export after mm-hmm. ray and nephew you know what i mean so um yeah man it was it was a, them, them days were good but what happened is now because even though I'm English, I'm English, Joxy's Jamaican, mm-hmm. but we've started to realise that we've got a loads of friends and stuff who are English-based. So then we just started doing house parties. We joined Genesis FM, Big Up Dennis Rowe, Saxon Sound. Mm-hmm. He gave us our first shot on radio. Sick. Then, um, you know, we're just travelling in London after. Big Up Mr Play. Mr Play gave us our first real big, not, not first big booking, but text me, um, Leicester Square. He used to do, him and Silk used to do, with CL, it was us, CLK, DJ Elmo, sometimes G Money. Then after that, we got on Baseline FM, G Money, um, Yardi, Gal Flex, Fifth Avenue, Happy ESQ, all them big man was on that station. We were the babies. But when we joined that station, that was like the turning point for all of us. Now, the thing is with our sound is that we are multi genre sound but we are favoured more on the dancehall side because of our roots, which is okay. totally cool. Me now, I'm more of a hip hop man. So mm-hmm. I had to sort of, when I say, like find my own lane, like look outside of what we're doing. So that's when the chocolate blocks come in, mm-hmm. meeting you, doing stuff with Tim and Barry, just jam, um, just show the scene and that. So, so I could get my fix. But when I used to get that fix and bring it back to what we was doing with Deep Clarity, it added to it because nobody was playing like how we was playing on all levels, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, even in regards to that, the whole remix thing, what we do, like, don't get me wrong, dub plates is a thing. We do have dubs, it is a thing. But the remixes now, what we do is like, it's a real big selling point for the sound because we are literally putting artists from the 90s on the new rhythms. We're putting artists from these times on the old rhythms. Like, I've got Steph London on Baby, Baby on Baby, like, Bolsty on Baby on Baby, like, and them things there bring everything together, culture-wise, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, like, that's given us a bit of an edge as far as when people's booking us, they're not saying to us, oh, three to four, can you play this? They're saying to us, do your thing. And the freedom in that is so good because sometimes I think promoters, some, some of them try to control the narrative a bit too much. Like, you can't control the vibe of what people want. And, yeah, because yeah, I've, I've had that before from promoters where, like... You know, if I've been, <clears throat> if I've if I've had to like close the party or um, you know some you know like just before peak time and I'm going off to to do something else, like the promoter would always be like, oh yeah, can you just like do like two thousand R and B or you know can you can you do this or can you do that? And you get there and it's it's not what the crowd wants, and then you kind of have mm-hmm. to promote still expecting to play a certain genre, and you know it's it's not going to work. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, it doesn't really happen too much now. Um, I mean, a lot of the promoters I work with are actually like mad cool, um, but there has been like some instances in the past where you know you turn up and they want you to maybe play, I don't know, maybe they want you to play like, let's say, for argument, say like Afrobeats or something, they want you to play, Afrobeats yeah, towards the end, but the other DJ has really gone on and literally just run everything, Re- like yeah, 15. yeah, it don't even make sense, yeah, <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, I can't, you know, I can't play this, you know, um. But yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. It's, it's crazy. Uh, that's one of the things I actually enjoyed um, speaking of remixes. Like one of the things I enjoyed about the mix when I listened back to it was, um, like you were saying, you know, matching up some of the older joints. Um, I think there was like a, I think there was a Baby Kelly joint on there that you that you updated as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think anyway. I'm not too sure. Let me check the track list. I, can't, I, can't, I ain't going to lie. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be real with you. A lot's happened. A lot yeah. has happened, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know I've, I've mean, been sitting on this mix for about three weeks and yeah, just trying yeah, to yeah. trying to kind of build a catalogue of stuff. I mean, yeah, I, I wanted to kind of launch this a little bit sooner, but um, obviously real life gets in the way and uh, yeah. I spent the last <laughs> three weeks learning how to like stream and use OBS and, and all this other nonsense as well. So. And right now, what's the rush, bro? Like, 
Yeah. Right now, if you even even if you even if you are spacing out when you put out things, just for everyone, mm-hmm. there's no rush. As in, you know what I mean? Like even I was saying to Dropsy the other day, like right now, a lot of DJs don't know what the club banger is. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. And now we're gonna now because now, now we're seeing what's happening. When you're, when you're watching sets on Instagram and stuff, a lot of people are doing club sets. Now there's nothing wrong with doing club sets, but the thing is. Come on, man. We know how the thing goes, cable man. You know, fully well. Sometimes you're playing a set, and a man's fully well got Shazam on when you're playing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Just to hear what's pop. You might not know, but now people's got to use their brain. Now people's got to try and. It's sort of taken us back to the essence of knowing what's hot and not without a crowd of people telling you it is. And I, I like that. I love mm-hmm. the trench with that. I love that. I love now that my thought process ain't gonna be on a thing of where let me play the banger like the generic banger, I'm, I think this is a banger, I'm going to play this. You know what I mean? And it's, it's interesting because as and when things do go back to normal, depending on obviously how quickly that is or how long it takes, um, yeah. people's tastes are going to be so different now. Like no one's really going to be kind of conditioned to wanting to hear what's on your, you know, the, the top Spotify playlist. Or yeah, you know? definitely. And we're, we're able to kind of take back control in a sense. You know, mm-hmm. we're able to... Um, play what we enjoy or hit you you know like say to someone like look you might not know some of these tunes but we're going to hit you with them and you're going to like them anyway and i'm hoping it will go back to how it was sort of kind of early 2000s late 90s where people didn't really know music but they still got a vibe to it they still danced to it yeah you know worst case scenario they might have gone to the bar got a drink and then come back on the dance floor later as opposed to this, oh, I don't know this song. I can't, you know, Snapchat myself singing along to it. Right? Yeah, can't be, can't be like, hey, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Can't, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, and that, that was kind of like one aspect of club and culture that I, I was really kind of getting to me prior to this was, you know, kind of turning up and doing my best to kind of play new stuff and kind of break records and play what I wanted. But yeah. A lot of the parties you play, um, especially like some of the kind of more commercial venues, um, like, especially outside of London as well, yeah. um, kind of like sort of Essex and Suffolk and Norfolk Way and whatnot, um, you kind of play something that's a little bit different to the norm and they're, they're not going to roll with it at all. Do you know what I mean? They're just yeah. like going to stand there or just like walk off the dance floor. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping off the back of this, people are going to be, um, you know, they're going to be open up to, to more stuff because obviously people, uh, DJs are kind of playing different shit now. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of hoping off the back of this that people's palettes are going to be, you know, a little bit more um, different than, you know. That's what I'm hoping as well. But again, it takes it takes a lot. But hopefully, again, a lot of DJs I've noticed, as I said, I watch, I watch everyone. Right? When I say that, I think some DJs, their attitude is, ah, I don't watch no one. I don't. To be honest with you, this is a competitive sport. Mm-hmm. It is a competitive sport, and you have to know what your competitors are doing. You could you could always politely compete. You don't have to be. I don't like this person. I don't like that person. But I don't really care who it is, from the smallest person to the so-called biggest person. I'm watching across the board because it is a movement we're in. You know what I mean? We're 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 peers, bro. We know each other through music. Yeah, for so real. So as, as I tell you, sometimes I'll message you out the blue. Blab. What you just done was mad. I believe in showing love all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But during this period, I really do hope that some DJs are going to, because again, like I said, the club sets on Instagram Live are starting to run thin now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I know, I hope now that people do start to actually play what they like and what they feel. And then you can get feedback off the people. How are you not feeling this one? Real-time feedback. You know what I mean? And then you could be like, okay, they're not really feeling that, but at least you're trying something new. Because, brother, I'm so tired of, like say say man say 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 the sounds book three night three three times in the night mm-hmm. and you go to every dance and it's the same bruv it's yeah. literally you're hearing the same stuff in the same order all the time and it's like this just feels like a conveyor belt you know what I mean and I didn't get into music for this yeah, I love yeah, music real. you know what I mean like I love music I love the culture I love I love I love what it stands for I love the lyrics I love the production I'm a geek like that you know mm-hmm. what I mean but. A lot of people, because of the error again, when me and you started, bro, we had to spend the little money we had on records, brother. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was different. When we bought a record, we looked at it, we read it because we bought it with our money. Now, people don't even know who's producing what, who's writing what, unless it's got a tag on it. 
Exactly. You know what I mean? So I really do hope that it is going to start. It, it will filter out the business. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping. Yeah, with the with the IG lives as well, because I mean it's still crazy. I mean, I can literally go on my phone now, like check this, and guarantee that literally it's gonna be a load of DJs on my IG. Live. Yeah. Like even then it's like literally live. Oh actually, maybe not. I'll just kind of hide myself there. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. So there's one DJ live at the moment on my circle. Um our Sentex yeah. live. All right, cool. Um shout out Sentex, OG. And um, but you know, Friday, Saturday night, I can I can kind of be on my phone. Oh yeah. And, um, yeah, everyone's going live, and it got me thinking that, like you're saying, you know, there's a lot of DJs that are just kind of playing club bangers. Do you think a lot of DJs at the moment are going live for the sake of going live to kind of appear, you know, like relevant, or they're worried that they're not going to be relevant when you know? When... I think so because even before this started, me and me, me, me and my sound, we was talking about going live, but again, it all came down to sound quality. You know mm-hmm. what I mean, like playing songs through the speaker and it sounds a certain way because I was like fam I need to roll live I want to go live and Esco and Jotsu was like bruv you need to relax like let's let's just get the sound right let's see let's see the landscape of what's going on and let's see where, where where we can fit into that um to your question though I think a lot of DJs miss the ego they miss the, they miss the oh here comes the DJ you know what I mean they miss yeah. the big ups they miss the yeah blood you killed it they, they miss all that so me, I miss playing music to people. Get me clarity. We miss entertaining the people. Like Esco will tell you in a dance. Um, it don't matter if it's ten or ten thousand people. We're we're gonna entertain and do our best. So it don't matter to us. But with the live, a lot of people are really on there for the sake of it. As in, you could tell who literally just put on their phone and said, "I'm gonna run some tune," to someone who said, "You know what?" I'm going to play it this way. I'm going to do that. I'm going to have a little talk. You know what I mean? And that, again, I think it's a bit of a generational thing as well. Because again, like I said, me and you, we had to start from the bottom as far as not having one record to having one, to having two, to having four, mm-hmm. and build it up. Where these guys, the majority of these guys who I speak to, the younger ones, I big up the younger ones, because there is a couple shooters, but they learn on virtual DJ, bro. That yeah. is mad to me. Yo, and, it's, it's even, and what's even crazier now is that, you know, you have new versions of Serato or the latest version of Serato, I should say, and you have Tidal and SoundCloud integration. Um, yeah. DJ City are working on, on something I can't say too much about at the moment, but mm-hmm. one, once that goes live, it's going to get to a point where you won't even need to purchase music. You'll just have a subscription to a streaming platform. And yeah. that's it. Your, your entire library, everything you can possibly imagine is there, which... For me, I think it's mad exciting. You know, yeah, I, I think it's good. Everything's there. I, if if I want to go and play like some next like seventies disco set, yeah, do that. Or if I want to go and play like you know an eighties boogie set, but dig like real deep for it and go through like yeah. various playlists, like find some like cool shit, I can do that. Um, I do miss the kind of tangible aspect of collecting music. Like I still collect, you know, vinyl and yeah, dance with forty fives, but. I still miss the kind of tangible aspect of, you know, like you're saying, like looking at the credits, looking at the line and I see produce what, where it is mixed down, where it's recorded, um, even down to having the the artwork. Um, yeah. You know, even you know, like the picture disc on the wall there. Yeah. You know, it's it's a piece of art. You know, let alone you know a piece of music like just the covers alone um, are amazing. Um, so that's that's one aspect I do miss, and yeah, it's exciting that you can have all this music opened up to you. But the the funny, the ironic thing is, is that there's going to be people that are going to be playing the same 200 songs every week. Like no yeah. Yeah. Because it's in this or quit. It's all BPM uniform. Yeah. Like, and, you know and what I mean? Like. And that's what I thought, that's what I thought when um, Spotify popped up. I thought, oh, wow, people are going to be discovering all this stuff. You know, you have SoundCloud, um, you have MixCloud with all these yeah. cool DJ mixes on there. People still want to gravitate to the same playlist that get updated yep. periodically. It's, it's crazy, man. Um, it is. It you is. Know, like imagine, imagine paying to go out to experience um, music in a live setting, and you only want to hear the same on repeat all night. Yeah. For me, that's counterproductive. Like, I, I'd, I'd say to anyone, like you know, if, if you if you come out to hear that for my set, stay at home. Like, yeah. Don't go Shit. out, bro. Do you know what I mean? So Shit. Um but I feel myself turning into snips at the moment. 
<clears throat> but it's true though, bro. It's like, I was even thinking about, even what you said, I have no issue with, a lot of people will have issues with um, you having access to everything. But one thing that the, the technology ain't mastered yet is the art of selecting. You know what I mean? I think, and don't get me wrong, I do feel that in about 10 years from now, they're going to try it in, as in everything's based on algorithms, everything's based on data. So say, for example, a promoter has a party and there's a piece of technology there, what could DJ for you? But when you're signing up to this thing now, it's getting all the algorithms of your playlist of what people listen to. So now what you could do is, is actually, okay, then there's at least 70% of people in here who all listen to the same sort of thing. And then the technology will be able to, to accompany that. This is why, again, it's very important for people to, to um, have their own niche in what they're doing. You know what I mean? And don't be scared of it because sooner or later, we're, like, like the cream's going to separate and we're going to see what's what. As you said, there is a group of people who literally just go out, bro, just to go out, just for the scene, just for the to go look man or go look gal. There's a lot of people who just literally go out for that. You know what I mean? And it's, as you said, bro, if you're expecting to hear anything normal from me or Deep Clarity, then forget about it. Best you don't come. I'm, I'm happy with, 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 with the niche of people we've got who support us and listen to us and appreciate us. I'm happy because mm-hmm. I would rather be here with some good quality airs than amongst 10,000 people who are just, when I say one, two, three, make some noise, just making noise because I told you, not because yeah. of a vibe, you know what I mean? So I totally hear you, my bro. Yeah, man, it's crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, talk us through the uh, talk us through the mix anyway. Like your how you approached um, the selection for it, and even even the remixes as well. Like what how yeah. you approach also doing the remixes that you guys do put together. Okay, well, with the mix, it was a thing of where I'm, for years I've been literally years I've been seeing you do little forty five segments, and and I'm like, nah, man, this brother knows tunes. I would love to go back to back, even like. We were talking a couple of years ago, mm. and it's like I said to myself, So, when I do this now, again, I'm not silly, like I know your reach, I know your, your, your eyes are on you, you know what I'm saying. And I thought to myself, Let me showcase that man could juggle, but also that man's got a couple of things that you can only really hear us play, if mm. you know what I mean. So, um, even with the remixes now, the remixes is such a crazy thing, as in like it's me. You got Dropsy, who's like the main DJ in the sound, and you got Esco, who's the main mic man in the sound. So I'm like in the middle, as in I can mic and I can DJ. So when it comes to putting together the remixes, most of it is always concept based. So say say there's a 45, like for example, um, Drew Hill sleeping in my bed, mm-hmm. 45. We will make we'll base our remixes off that whole scenario, as in okay, then the first song's about sleeping in my bed. Then after I've got the remix of um. Don't let me cheat on my girlfriend. You know what I mean? Um, then I've got the lands. Um, I get, um, what's the song called again? Um, Sheena Lego. It's about two girls who want a man. Mm-hmm. And then I finish on the, um, the most I can miss. Two girls on my side. One in the middle, because it's a story. You know what I yeah, mean? It's yeah. like, even with us on the, we've got the um, stage show rhythm, stage mm-hmm. time rhythm. And it sounds like live instruments. We basically put together who we would want to hear at at stage show. Mm-hmm. But everything is within concepts. Like um, we've got Bad and Bougie, the 45, Migos. And we've got um, Mavado on that, Gangster Life. Like this is what the Gangster Life is like because she's Bad and Bougie. She wants a bad man. You know what I mean? So we try to connect all the dots mm-hmm. as much as possible. At the, but, but the remix thing is it's deep, bro. I mean, like, even with the lives we've been doing, I've only been able to do one live so far with the sound because of quarantine and all these things. But mm-hmm. when people listen to us, it is, it's, it's, it's crazy, bro. It's like people are not believing like what we've got. Like we've got, we've got Oasis on Jungle. Like I've got, <laughs> we've got, <laughs> we've got, we've got Ed Shireen on the, on, on, on the taxi rhythm. We've got um, Lordy on the drop leaf rhythm. You know what I mean? Like, it is some different thing. But again, it is not random. When we're performing, when we're talking on the microphone, we're making speeches to connect these and songs. That's, that's what I've always rated about how sound systems, like, 
hearing the way that uh, the music's presented in that way. Like, it just kind of blew yeah. my mind. So I was like, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, how people connect. And, you know, you, you have, like, set-up records in, in hip-hop um, and more that kind of open format clubs where, you know, you might run, like, three, I don't know, JD joints back-to-back or you'll mm-hmm. have, you know, you'll do some kind of wordplay mix or, yeah, like, say, something on the mic. Oh, uh, bro, sorry to cut you, bro, but your, your wordplay mix is on like nuts, bro. Basically. They're nuts, fam. <laughs> They're nuts, fam. Right? So yeah. It's. Do you know what? I, I was trying to do them weekly on a Monday. I was, then I was trying to do um, music Mondays, and then I, I literally just kind of ran out of ideas for after a while. I was just like, I don't know how I can keep this shit going, man. But um, but yeah, I know there's like people like Andy P who are like churning them out on a daily basis at the moment. Yeah. Which is one of the cool things about obviously lockdown. I mean, yeah, it sucks that there's a lot of things we can't do. But one of the the, the cool things is that. There's a lot of creativity being born out of it at the moment. Um, there's a lot of time, well. obviously, a lot of time on our hands to uh, come up with some amazing shit. But um, but yeah, going back to, to what I was saying is, you know, how the music was presented at these dances. Um, and even even like a clash bass as well. When I go back and watch like old like bass Odyssey clashes and old like Rodigan mm, clashes, mm. like, um, you know, even like the Rodigan Poison Dart one, you know, how they'll, yeah. how they'll like voice it and then all of a sudden, drop into something how they just set the records up it's um it's ridiculous it's, uh, just the <laughs> finesse behind it it's just stoic, yeah do you know what i mean and um that that's one thing that i definitely try to kind and, and take for you know in, into my sort of style of djing probably not so much on the mic because obviously i'm not the biggest talker but you know just kind of using set up records or, or trying to tell a story somehow with you know some quick like wordplay routines but um yeah but yeah it's um you know, and I forgot the point I was trying to make. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, fuck, I let it shout out as well. Um, but yes, yeah, so, I mean, uh, that, that, was my, that was my original point is, you know, um, obviously, like how, how, you know, tell the story and obviously listening back to your mix as well, how, like you said, you know, there's certain like set up records and how obviously you're able to yeah. tell the story that, that way. Um, you mentioned also about like cutting dubs. Are you are you still cutting dubs as much as you were? Um, not not to me. To, like this is how it goes. Like when it comes to dubs, to me, if if you're, it's a very tra- it's a very expensive trap people fall into the dub thing. Like it is, it could be great. I know a man who has spent over two hundred bags on dubs. And he's still living at home with their mum. Yeah, like it's not even, and that's not even no disrespect because the passion of the music, I get it, but the dub game is very, very, very sticky. As in, once you say you're a dub sound, you're a dub sound now. Now you've got a certain expectation to me. You know what I mean? So a lot of the dubs we have are legendary dubs. As in, for example, we've got Dawn Penn, No, No, No. That's a legendary dub. Like no matter where I drop that around the world, people's going to be going crazy. And then we go from that to Stylo G. Stylo G's like, big up Stylo, big up Warning, but he's an artist who we know differently, as in my family used to mess with his family, as in like make money together in these things. So when he came from Jamaica, he's been on his music thing, and now we've always supported him. So when he does a tune, we don't even have to ask for it. He'll just send the dub. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But where we're at with it is we've taken the energy of dubs, customising dubs to the remixes, as in it's the same thing, as in a man can never outplay my box because he can't outplay my remixes. There's like some sounds, what, 10, 15 sounds that all have the same dub on the mm-hmm. same 45 rhythm it was cut on. You know what I mean? With the, with the remixes now, we treat them as dubs. They're, they're our babies, you know what I mean? We, mm-hmm. we built them. And we risk it with them as well, because just because we think, yeah, this is dope, we have to remember, like, no disrespect to the audience, but as Jay Z says, sometimes you've got to dumb down your, you've got to dumb down your, 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 your style to double your dollars. And sometimes to us as as music people, we get everything. Like we know, yeah, this is dope. But then there's people who just enjoy music, as in just going out. Mm-hmm. So it is a risk sometimes to play a new, um, a new remix, and it might not work. You know, I mean, even more than a dub, because in a dub, I could play a dub and it could say all the sounds name and everyone will go blap, blap, blap and big it up because of that. Mm-hmm. But with the remix thing now, it's a thing of where I prefer it over the dub because I can literally manipulate any artist in the world, in any genre in the world to come and join what I'm doing. I can mm-hmm. educate through the remixes, as in, you don't know about Supercat. Man, here's Supercat on this new rhythm. You know what I mean? So even with the older people, 
like the the, the, the um like the forties and fifty year olds who we play in front of, we could play a new artist on the older beat. So we're doing the music a justice, if you know what I mean. But um, back to your original point about dub plates. Um, now it's not a thing of like we cut what we like. We just don't cut for the sake of cutting. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when we cut, we cut for a purpose. And even when we get that dub, like we will, we'll have three versions of it. We'll have a combination. It will. We'll do things with it, what we'll do with the remixes as well. So um, even right now, even like even some of the artists, them like Alkaline and 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 I think Popcorn, he, he charges like a grand a dub plate, a thousand pound a dub plate. Yeah, bro, you know? I'm, I'm hearing crazy prices for Budjo now. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, Budjo. Yeah, but I'm, I'm hearing Budjo's prices is mad. Damian mm-hmm. Marley is mad. But again, to me. I have no issue with Budgel charging over a grand. I have no issue with Damian Marley charging over a grand, but I do have an issue with the artist who's been out for two years. He's got probably four big songs trying to tell me a thousand pounds. I have an issue with that, you know what I mean? And I'm just being real. Some, yeah, for real. Um, sometimes people don't want to hear that, but I'll just say what it is, because either way, I will still take your song if you don't give me a double or you can't negotiate a good price with me, and I'm still going to bust you, mm-hmm. but I'm also going to bust myself off the back of that. And hopefully, yeah. especially now with all that, all the people like again, we've been doing our lives for like three weeks now, and um, a lot of eyes are on us now. But we can now showcase what we can do instead of just giving an hour to mm-hmm. play in a dance. And you know what I mean? What about yeah. you, man? What were you saying about dubs? Um, I never, I haven't really got too too big into it. Like this year was actually going to be the year where I've got my shopping list. Basically, say right, these are dubs that I want, and you know. Like you, it, it was just going to be the, the kind of timeless classics. Um, you know, I'm I'm not a clashing person, so I would have yeah. you know um, got my voice a different way. Um, you know, just for for raves and you know for mixtapes and whatnot. Um, yeah. But again, it's like you said. You know, it's it's also a very very slippery slope. You know, because um, again, it's it's just like collecting. You know, it's like collecting sneakers. It's like collecting forty five. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm very very obsessive when it comes to things like that so i know that once i get on that that dub plate bus that's like, it bro, like, yeah yeah i'm gonna have my savings after that shit <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah um, man but i i do like the aspect of having these kind of you know times because you know again the, the artists aren't going to be around forever sadly so yeah. so th- there's tunes from like the kind of mid to late 90s that um what's, what's my cat doing wait don't do that <laughs> Well, the cat's trying to tap my records for some reason. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, you know that there's, you know, the artist isn't always going to be there. So, um, you know, and again, you know, that's why people like Rodigan and Bass Odyssey and uh, you know Poison Dart and you know um, Stone Love that you know yeah. they've got the, these amazing dubs. Catalogs are stupid. Well, yeah. I mean, I've cut from the seventies, eighties onwards, where um, yeah. you know I'm, I'm never going to be able to to ever compete with that. You know, so I'm yeah. You know, not even thinking about even doing that with the intention of fashion, but but yeah, just going back to it. Um, I said the arts aren't always going to be around, so I think if you're able to kind of get a dub of, of like a you know a classic tune, then it holds weight in you know in certain scenarios and stuff. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. It's a very neat. It's, it's still a very niche thing. Like mm. dubs are, are very um. Not a lot of people know about the history of them. Not a lot of people know the big bloody deal it is for a Grammy reigning artist saying your sound's name or your DJ's name yeah. before a song. Like, I can see why people go broke, you know what I mean? Because we are all fanboys at the end of the day. DJs are the biggest fanboys of music ever, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So that does give you a big boost. But at the same time, if your crowd is not privy to that, like, what, what are you doing in a way? As in, you can end up making yourself black for that. Yeah. And it starts compromising your art because now you want to play your dubs in the set where now you're finding a way to play your set in a way where you can reach your dub instead of just letting it flow naturally. So there's there's many factors in this dub thing, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I always looked at it as like a, like an investment um, to the point where if I get the right dubs cut and I'm playing yeah. out in the right setting and mm. you cast off of it and you get booked off the back of that, then cool. All right, yeah. you're now booking me to hear my dub plates. And yeah. Using it as a way to, to kind of reach, you know, uh, different places off of that. Um, I always find that like Europe, Europe and Japan, um, mm-hmm, they, they seem mm-hmm. a lot more receptive to it. And 
not even just for dub plays, but just kind of music in general. Um, you know, a lot of the, the best gigs I've had have always been like mainland Europe, like Germany, Switzerland. Um, yeah, I played Germany once, Dancehall versus Soka, um, Big Up Flags. And, bro, I was very sceptical, like, bro, we're going to Germany, bro, and we're playing Dancehall and Soka, bro. And I'm like, obviously in my mind, because I know there's sounds from Germany and that, like, what do their thing. And, but I thought, is that going to be everyone? But when we went there now, Man, the people them know songs. You can't try and fool them. You can't try and go there and play your Shaggy and Sean Paul, bro, because they 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 don't want to hear that. They want to hear Ninja Man. They they, they want to hear Admiral Bailey. They want to hear Bounty Killer. They 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 want to hear proper like unleaded songs. And I'm and again, I don't get like again, our a lot of our culture, a lot of of, of especially the music in this country comes from the sound system era. You mm-hmm. know what I mean, like. Like Saxon, for example, one of the biggest sounds in England, England, if not the biggest, they had man spitting on their set in there. So I don't under, I don't know what's happened with the passing of the torch or the teachings, but it's like if you look at then till now, it's like it's become so disjointed. It's it's mad. And but you go to somewhere like Germany or France or even like even in Italy and Japan. And they know the team proper. It's just so baffling to me, man. Yeah, I think one of the one of the best dancehall sets I ever had uh, was in Lille, um, in France, and it's like a tiny little bar. It's called Rhythm, actually, and um, mm. you know they they book a lot of dancehall DJs, lot of selectors, and um, they just love like UK culture as well in in general. So they get like a, a lot of like UK funky DJs sometimes doing sets. Yeah, and um, they put on a specific dancehall night and. Yeah, I was able to juggle four or five cuts of rhythms that I would never ever get away with here. Yeah. You know I mean, and yeah. that was that was just so refreshing. And they knew the tunes as well, you know, and they're still like, you know, singing along to them. It's, it's crazy. Um it's mad. And, you know, just touching on what you're saying about passing the torch, like in this day and age, like, I, I don't even really think like juggling is a thing for like new DJs. It's Bro, you know I mean? it, it, even like how how I think we spoke about I think it was what's happening about this a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And um, even like with me, this is how I look at it. It's like a DJ lineup. So if there's a rhythm and there's five men on it, guess what's gonna happen? Every man is going to try and outdo each other. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Now a lot of the artists, them, they are literally just working with their own producer, their own beats, and it's one song per rhythm. Like it's caught up a little bit now, but it's still not enough. It's still it's still heavily outweighed by the dancehall singles. Mm-hmm. And again, I think this is where I love dancehall music in Jamaica and I love dancehall music, but I, I believe the competitive edge and quality has dropped a bit because of the rhythm element being taken out of it. As in, we're competitive people. Jamaican, we are mad competitive. We want to dress better than everybody. We want to cook <laughs> better than everybody. So when we're doing a song now, and I know, say I'm, I'm, I'm an artist and I know Beanie Man and Cartel and Squash is on this rhythm, I'm going to do my best to be the best of this rhythm. But if I'm by myself now on a beat and I could write to it, there's, the pressure ain't there. And we all know that pressure creates diamonds and busts pipes. So mm-hmm. it has taken away a bit. Like there is still some artists, like for example, Cartel to me is still the king. Mm-hmm. He's still the, he's in jail. He's been in jail for like four years, but the music he's putting out, he's the king. He's a bit like Jay-Z. And when I say that Jay-Z and LL Cool J are around the same age but Ella was from one era Jay-Z was from another era but the thing is Cartel's from the is actually from the 90s era so mm-hmm. that's why to me his music is so good it's like Jay-Z is, Jay-Z came out like 90s but he was able to transcend because he was he was there from before okay I've been educated in that now going forward I can move my craft with the artists these days in dancehall a lot of the new ones like they're coming out with some bullshit called trap dance or like yeah don't get me wrong I, I was listening yeah. to a little bit I'll, I'll, some I'll, of the songs I'll, are good I'll, there was a couple yeah. um quote unquote trap dance or songs what are good but for me personally without dance or there's no hip hop so mm-hmm. why would you then take from that which originated originally from what you man are doing then trying to it's backwards you know what I mean but there's still some really good artists like Idonia is still popping. Mm-hmm. Movado is like on a little comeback trail now. You got Jamil, you got Intense, you got the whole six squad, Jamali. And um 
yeah, man, it's, 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 it, there is hope there. There is definitely hope there. And again, even when you hear all the singles, when you hear the Justin Bieber's and, and, and the um, Ed Sheeran, even the song they had together, that's a dancehall song, bro. You mm-hmm. can't tell me that's not. That's a dancehall song. Like. Do you think it would ever get to a point where like, Afrobeat artists um, start doing um, different versions of rhythm? I don't know because a lot of even even, even the African artists, the big African artists, um, like I say, Burner Boy, Wiz, like them man there, they're blatantly influenced by dancehall. No one like Stevie Wonder could see that. Like mm-hmm. you can't tell me that that it's not. But um, as far as them, I would love to hear them on rhythms. Like again, I've got Davido on rhythms because man makes remixes. We make yeah, yeah. remixes, so you could hear how these men will sound on dancehall and they fit on it perfectly, bruv. It's, like, it's, 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 it's such a simple remix to do, as in sonically, like how the, how the accent sounds on the rhythm and that. It's so easy to do like that. So mm. I think it is something what could work. Like, I would love to hear them man there on a rhythm with Six and with Cartel and that. I would love to hear that. That would be, to me, that, 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 that would be sick. But if we get it, I don't know, because at the same time now, a lot of the African artists are in the light. They're in the limelight now. And they're on holding it. And I don't blame them because every scene does that. Well, some mm-hmm. scenes should do it more than others. But they're on. They, they literally know they've got their own. Look at, look at um, Afro B with that Joanna tune. Bro, like, he released that a hot minute ago. And bro, he they, worked they, the song. They've been working that song for like Yeah, so bro. Crazy. You know what I mean? Work the song, work the song, work the song. And now it's getting the success it deserves. And to me, even with that beat, we've made remixes on that instrumental with dancehall mm. artists, got Cartel and Movado on there, and it sounds sick. So it is something what can definitely work. If it will happen, I don't know. I do really believe, though, if Cartel was on road, I believe that these artists would have drawn to, to work with Cartel. Like, you could tell, they, they love 100%. Cartel. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? WizKid has already worked with Cartel, obviously, like recently, but mm-hmm. I think that if Cartel was unrolled, a lot of things would be different dancehall wise. Yeah, man. No, it's it's dope, man. I mean, um, yeah, it'd be be interesting to see obviously what, what happens with that. I think we're we're kind of at a place now where, you know, everyone's drawing from each other with influences and stuff. And I think um, you know, yeah, it's only a matter of time before we hear like more um, Afrobeats and dancehall artists collaborating. Maybe you know they might start doing rhythms. Um, you know, even you know you've got even uh, Afrobeats artists working with like Soka artists now. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, bro, Soka, bro. Listen, Soka this year, Soka like Soka's been bubbling for ages, but a lot of people like the classic Soka stuff. But during that time, where we've already been paying a lot of attention to because it is, again, it's even more niche than dancehall. But um, I, went, I went and played in St. Lucia 2017 and because I was amongst the culture and amongst the music, I thought, wow. But even over the last couple of years, Soul Cut is really starting to pick up pace. I think Major Lazer even put out a Soul Cut EP the other day. Like, it is re- you know how Major Lazer, he loves to do that anyway. He likes to go yeah. and like to say he's originated something. But you'll just look at it, grab it, and do his thing with it. But it's still exposure, so I'm not that mad. But yeah. Soka this year was about to do a madness, in my opinion, because I never really used to like Soka, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Like, I'm part Beijing as well. So I never really used to like Soka, even as a Beijing. But over the years, I've really started to get into it and like it because it's, it's got that energy of how old school dancehall used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right now, dancehall's very dark, as in... A lot of the beats, a lot of the rhythms are very dark, what they're talking about. We're in Soka now. Soka's got a really big, like, 90s, early 2000s energy to it. And it is the party music, bro, like, different. Even if you don't like Soka, mm-hmm. right how it is right now, you have to move to it. Yeah, yeah. But it's, so it's yeah. unfortunate what's, what's happened this year, but... Yeah, man. Yeah, man, Soka's the next wave, I reckon, anyway. I'm, yeah. um, again, big up Flags, promotion team. Mm-hmm. Dave... Like I see them, like they 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 do soca weekend in Berlin and in Spain and and Portugal and stuff like. And I'm talking about pure soca. You got people like Puffy coming over and stuff. And even though he's a multi genre man, when he gets into his soca bag, it's different. It yeah, is shout different. Out Puffy, man. Sick, yeah, Puffy's it. wicked. You know I mean? And um, but I do believe it's coming though. I do really believe that it is coming. Like it, I, I feel so because again with the Afro beats. 
don't get me wrong, but we go into a time of formulas, as in, oh, that formula works. Let us do that formula. Adjust it a little bit. And right now, a lot of music is formula driven, Mm -hmm. as in everyone's copying everyone to a certain extent just to stay safe and sell their records. With Soka now, it's really not like that, as in they really are on individuality and there's even rhythms in there as well. You get me? But um, mm-hmm. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I, th- I think Soka will get its love. I think it will get its love soon. It would have been this year. I would have bet my house on it. It would have been this year. But everything for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. How do you, how do you think things are going to go back to normal? Um, like, do you, do you see people kind of more gravitating towards um, like online spaces, like, you know, Zoom parties has been like a lot of that um, Mm -hmm. over the past few weeks or people kind of congregating on like Twitch or Facebook Live or Mixcloud Live. Do you think people are going to be more conditioned to staying in or do you think there's going to be a massive bounce back um, when things start opening and people are desperate? I don't know. A lot, a lot, a lot of people who I've, who I've spoken to, their attitude has been, even when this lockdown ends, I'm not on raving because when I was raving, I weren't raving for the right reasons. I was spending money on it. I was just going out for the hype. I think a lot of people have really realised that they are not actually connoisseurs of music who go out to hear music. They just literally go out for the scene. So I don't know if there's going to be... I think there will be a bounce back, obviously, because you've got the younger generation who want to live their best lives. But overall i think it will be a very slow and steady um bounce back as if people are still going to be scared to a certain extent um and i think as well as you said about zoom and like the twitch and the instagram stuff i think that's going to be here forever now i believe the a lot of djs have woken up and like raw why have i never used this i've got ten thousand followers and i've never dj to them even once and I think that will stay, which is good because we, we need a replacement for radio, bro. Like, as in, this is the new radio. We can break songs on here now. Yeah. We can, you know what I mean? We could, we could show our skills on here now. We could present on here now. And we've needed that. So I'm happy the reset button has been pushed on that. But I think the, the Zoom stuff and all the streaming stuff will stay. And I think as far as going back to people going out and stuff, I think it's going to be a very, very slow burner into it because I know this ain't jail this is nothing like jail but in jail there's something called being institutionalised where you just become so used to your not going out not going to the shop not going to go see your missus and all that you sort of just become accustomed to it mm-hmm. and the longer it lasts to me is the longer it will be where people are just like you know what I ain't gonna fuck going out I don't even want to go out you know what I mean and I think there, there is a danger in that happening but I just feel that we need to just try and um, like even what you're doing here, the, the, the 420 stuff you've done, like you content, you've always been a man for content anyway. Mm-hmm. So the adjustment yeah, for so you yeah. is not that hard where you can see a place forward where there's a whole lot of other man who literally, literally depended on just playing out. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think um, I mean, it's important, fair, man. The, the 420 stuff was really self-indulgent. I just wanted my own rolling papers and um, yeah. <laughs> and I just wanted a cassette. Why not, though? I wanted a cassette, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, the, the bonus is that, you know, a few people bought them at the end of the day. So I broke even. That's not bad. But, yeah, but yeah uh, I think content is definitely king for, for you know. Uh, for definitely. And DJs doing. need to start letting people know about their personalities a bit more. Like, a lot of men are stiff and when I say stiff I mean to the point of you're not even trying to crack joke bro you're literally standing there screwing the <laughs> screwing the phone while you're doing your mixes bro mm-hmm. and I think don't get me wrong not everyone has to be out there but again for example to what I know of you and how I know you you're never going to be the guy to be shouting on the mic and all these things you're going to do your yeah. you, you you it's weird like unless I'm like really 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 fucking drunk then, yeah. Then, then I'm on my mic. But but how? But what I've observed to how you DJ is it's very much like your character, bro. And that's bro, that's sick, man. Because you you're you're putting your energy and fingerprint into people's lives sonically, bro. Through who you are as a person, fam. That is sick, fam. So again, I don't. I mean, what, what what I'm saying, what I'm saying, I don't expect people to be running around and jumping and all that. But again, with you. Even if you was to talk on the mic, I know what, I could hear it already, bro. I've not heard you do it, but I can hear the tone of what it's going to be. 
because you don't try to be more than who you are. But at the same no, I time, that. Big up, man. you're comfortable you know I mean? in your skin, bro, where a lot of men are not comfortable in their skin. So when they're DJing and stuff now, they're literally just playing songs and looking at the camera, bro. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's again... It comes down to who's in this thing for what reasons as well. And I'm so happy that the filtering process has begun with this lockdown because we're seeing it, bro. We're seeing it. Yeah, man. It's, it's, um, it's been interesting to see, you know, like we're saying, like who's kind of forward thinking, who's actually um, using the time wisely to, to put out good content. And, you know, like we're saying, who's kind of jumping on desperately thinking, oh, shit, are people going to yeah. forget about me? And, you know, a lot of these IG lives do kind of reek of desperation. And, you know, like we were saying, they're, they're playing the same played out stuff or the same kind of throwback stuff. It's um, it's kind of mad. I think, you know, anyone who's looking to kind of jump on IG Live or whatever, you know, if you want to do it for the hell of it and have fun, then by all means, like, do it because that's, you know, you, you're just being true to yourself. But yeah, I think if you do want to kind of think about this long term, then have a game plan, have a think about what you like playing and how you can present it. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you've now got OBS and you can do so much like cool, crazy, interesting things with it in terms of how you present your live stream now. So yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be like a camera of you DJing. You can run graphics and... Graphic, yeah. And this is another thing as well, like graphic designers who are out of work at the moment, they're, they're missing the trick here because if they started going into like OBS overlays and... Um, you know, uh, like loading screens for live streams and stuff like that. Yeah, they'll, Cause, well, cause they'll, it's all, they'll, cause yeah. it's all aimed at gamers at the moment. The minute like someone sits back and thinks, yo, I could start tailoring stuff towards like DJs and musicians and artists who want to put on, you know, like pay-per-view concerts and things like this. Um, yeah. Make it absolutely killing, man. Like the, the whole door has been like blown open for, for you know, all kinds of all, all, all yeah. creative types, yeah. Wicked. Yeah, I mean, but um, cool, man. I'm going to wrap this up anyways. Um, so I need to let my cat out. She's um, <laughs> yeah, just been, I don't know if you've heard her, she's been like meowing in the background. My, I've, I've got two cats, brother. None of them's in here because I can't deal with them, bruv. <laughs> like, this, this, this would have been disturbed so much times already. So they've, they've kicked out of the room. I think oh, up the cats, though. They bring yeah. peace. Real, and they know when you're feeding away like cats know it's weird like yeah so for anyone watching this uh we'll put a link to the mix in the description below so just open the description the mix cloud link will be there and vice versa as well um hopefully if you listen to the mix first then there's a link to the video so that you come via that uh we're obviously just yep. trying to build both platforms at the moment um yeah this is back to back um episode 004 uh just a quick fire round uh first up three things you've uh, gained out of lockdown so far um, stress. <laughs> <laughs> Three positive okay, no, things. Right. Um, wait, I've lost weight. I've lost weight, cool. which okay. is good. I'm happy with that. Um, I've, I've rediscovered my love of finding music again. You know what I mean? Like, as in listening to a song instead of taking it like from a DJ pool, rushing it in my crates and heading out the door. Like, I'm happy that I've broken the cycle that way. Mm-hmm. And um, thirdly, I've become closer to my family and Wicked. You know what I mean? There's been ups and downs, but we've really started to know each other during this time, which I'm which I'm happy about, man. That's that's cool, man. I mean, you know, and the thing I, I kind of take from this is like, you know, provided like my peers are happy, the families are happy and everyone's healthy and stuff, then yeah. you know, that's that's the main thing, you know. It sucks that a lot of us are out of work and you know, but money comes and goes at the end of the day, you know, you can't put a price exactly. on health and family and that. And exactly. just a quick bonus round as well, because uh, we spent yeah. the last god knows how long talking about dance hall. Um Top three dancehall rhythms of all time. Go. Oh, <laughs> all right. Um, top three dancehall rhythms of all time. Blood. Um, Showtime. Showtime. Showtime's a mad okay. classic. Showtime rhythm. Um, wow. Well, jo- jo- I think Jopsy might kill me for because I know I know his his thing. That he's like, what you said that um slang tang rhythm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And third, um, those are two old rhythms, but I think anger management rhythm oh, is one of the best yeah, rhythms ever show. because it, it just bridges, it bridges such a gap between the old and the new and, and the time it came out. Anger, man, anger management is one of the, oh, it's, mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, those are my three. Those are my three. Showtime, same thing, anger management. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I'm putting Showtime like that. It's like one of the greatest rhythms of all time. It's wicked, yeah, wicked, man. bro. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's like it's like 15 cuts in it and it all bang, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah, mad. 
It's, it's crazy. Um, I, do you know what? I'd put like Brock out in, in top five as well. Yeah, Brock out's there. Yeah, yeah Brock out's there. It's, uh, it's great. We, should, we should actually we should actually go back and do like a maybe like thousands like early two thousand next on the so, I'm down for that, bro. Again, fully, man. Even even like a lot of the reasons that we just spoken about, obviously, like kind of you know late eighties to in late eighties to, to kind of mid nineties and stuff. Um, yeah, there's still like so many sick rhythms from that kind of two catalogs. Two thousand two thousand three was like it was so stupid. Yeah. It was it was it was crazy, bro. We're talking about Buzz Rhythm came out then. We're talking about Diwali. We're talking about Mad Guitar. Bro, the Rhythm no, came out in the era. Mad Guitar, was, man. Like, that yeah, was bro. Hard. Um, you know, even, Mad Instruments. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad Guitar, Mad Instruments. Um, what else was there? Like, even like Chrome Rhythm as well. Like, Chrome was sick. Oh, yeah. Um, Chrome was bad as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's, yeah, man. Uh, even like the Lexuses, Cook and mm. Good Hole and them songs there. Like, oh, bro, that era. That, that, yeah, Phantom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that that ever there was wicked, bro. Wicked, yeah, man. Wicked. All right, cool. Well, we'll definitely get back to that. And um, yeah, yeah, man. For everyone who's still watching, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, more stuff to come soon. And uh, bruv, always a pleasure. Great to connect. Yeah, you. man. Yeah, man. Big up cable. I just want to say big up cable because again, he's a man I know through music. And to be honest with you, there's a lot of men who I know through music who don't really like f with man. And when I say that. Like you could be humble all you want, cable. You could be humble all you want, but I'll say it. You're, you, 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 you've, you, you've built a quite a high plateau for yourself. You didn't have to fuck with me. You get me. You didn't have to, but because you're a music man, you did. You get me. So big you up. Keep on doing your thing. No, big up deep clarity sound. You get me. Old tight dropsy. Old tight esco. Follow deep clarity at deep clarity ent on everything. The SoundCloud. The remix CD is there. How me and cable talk about remixes? The remix CD is there. It's got. Listen, bro, we start with celebrate now. You get me calling the gang. That's yeah. what we start with. And after that, it's a Deneo on that. Bro, I've been anyway, talking no more. You get me, bro? <laughs> That's there. Sick. And yeah, man, hope you don't enjoy the mix. Cable, salute. And hey. we'll link up soon, my brother. Respect, man. Peace. Done, though, man. Love, brother.